This is Henry Kissinger, the renowned former U.S. National Security Advisor and Secretary of State, a statesman who has traversed the treacherous landscapes of the Cold War and the Vietnam War and witnessed the turbulent Afghan Jihad of the 1970s and 1980s. As we celebrate his 100th birthday, it is only fitting that we reflect upon the profound insights he has imparted to us throughout his remarkable career. One of Henry Kissinger's most significant lessons resonates particularly strongly in our current era, marked by the rising tensions between the United States and China. With an astute vision that spans decades, Kissinger emphasized the crucial role of allies in overcoming the challenges posed by a rising power such as China. In his wisdom, he recognized that the strength of the United States lies not only in its military might, but also in the alliances it forges across the globe. As we delve into the topic of allies' role in U.S.-China military tensions, we find ourselves compelled to examine the validity of Kissinger's assertion. How vital are alliances in the face of an increasingly assertive China? Can the United States confront this formidable adversary without the support of its allies? In today's video, we will draw lessons from past conflicts and role of U.S. allies. We'll talk about how U.S. allies from the Philippines, Australia, South Korea, and Europe could shape the Taiwan issue, and we'll suggest some measures to maintain global peace and resolution on the Taiwan issue. But before that, we would like you to subscribe to our channel for more economic insights. Drawing Lessons from Past Conflicts – How U.S. Allies Shape the Future Back in the day, when the world was split between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, tensions were high. That's what we call the Cold War. And you know what helped the U.S. come out on top? Yep, you guessed it. It's allies. These buddies teamed up with the U.S. and formed strong alliances. Think of them like superhero teams. Together, they had the power to keep the Soviet Union in check and protect democracy. Now, let's fast forward a bit. Remember the Vietnam War? It was a big deal, and the U.S. had a rough time there. But guess what? Its allies, like South Korea, Australia, and others, stood by its side. They offered support and troops to help the U.S. out. Allies like these played a vital role in shaping the outcome of the conflict. Oh, and let's not forget about Afghanistan in the 1970s and 80s. Back then, the U.S. was all about supporting Afghan fighters in their battle against the Soviet Union. And who do you think helped the U.S. in this fight? That's right, it's allies again. Together, they provided assistance, weapons, and even intelligence. Allies were like the secret ingredient that helped the U.S. deal a blow to its rival. Now let's bring it back to the present. We've got this rising power on the block called China. The U.S. and China are kind of butting heads, and it's getting intense. But remember the lesson which we told you at the start of the video? Henry Kissinger said that to tackle a challenge like China, the U.S. needs allies. Lots of them. It worked before, so it might just work again. So, let's gear up and explore how these allies could play a pivotal role in the U.S.-China showdown over Taiwan. United We Stand – Allies as Pivotal Players in the U.S.-China Conflict First up, the Philippines could be a key player in the U.S.-China showdown. Recently, the president of the Philippines, Bongbong Marcos, paid a visit to the White House. Interesting timing, right? This visit came right after the largest ever joint military exercises between the U.S. and the Philippines. But here's the kicker. The drills focused on securing the channel between the Philippines' northern islands and Taiwan. That's a big deal. Now, while all this was going on, the Chinese foreign minister, Chin Gang, made a trip to Manila. He tried to convince the Philippines, a U.S. treaty ally that had gotten closer to Beijing under the previous president, Rodrigo Duterte, not to pick sides in the U.S.-China tussle. But here's where it gets really interesting. President Marcos granted the U.S. access to four new bases, three of which are located in the northern part of the Philippines, facing Taiwan. Now, China's ambassador to Manila, Huang Shilian, made some strong statements back in April. He accused the Philippines of using these bases to interfere in the situation across the Taiwan Strait, and even hinted at a potential threat. But hold on. President Marcos clarified that these bases were meant for collective defense, not offensive operations. He emphasized that the Philippines wouldn't become a military staging post. Sounds like they're playing it safe, right? 
So why is the Philippines so important in all this? Well, it's all about location. The Philippines is in a prime spot. Without access to the Philippines, U.S. forces could be left floating around in the ocean, vulnerable to Chinese missiles. Now let's talk about another crucial ally in the U.S.-China situation, Japan. Here's the scoop. For a long time, U.S. military bases in Okinawa have been like launch pads for U.S. operations. From the Vietnam War to Afghanistan, they've played a central role. So, even if Japan doesn't take any direct action, China sees them as involved in any Taiwan crisis. But guess what? Japan is making its own plans. They're stepping up cooperation with the U.S. and increasing their defense spending like never before. They're getting serious about their defense. Japan is the most likely U.S. ally to actually send troops to defend Taiwan if things escalate. The thing is, Japan's constitution limits its military to self-defense. However, some folks in Tokyo argue that an invasion of Taiwan would seriously endanger Japan's survival. Now, Japan may not explicitly commit to defending Taiwan, but there are ways to send a strong message to China. They can improve their command and control systems and work closely with U.S. forces to show that they won't just sit on the sidelines. A similar case is with Australia. Australia's geography makes it a crucial hub for the U.S. They can use it to resupply their forces and launch operations. But don't picture Australia right in the middle of the action in the Taiwan Strait. According to Ashley Townsend, a military expert in Sydney, Australia's role is more likely to be behind the scenes. However, that doesn't mean Australia isn't stepping up. They're deepening their military ties with the U.S. and making some big investments. They're upgrading their military bases in the north and even planning to get nuclear submarines through the AUKUS framework. In a Taiwan crisis, Australia would have its own set of responsibilities. They would work on securing sea lanes and keeping an eye on Chinese vessels in a wide area. They might even have tasks like escorting U.S. bombers as they head toward the Taiwan Strait. That's a pretty important job. So, Australia may not be right on the front lines, but they have their part to play. South Korea is stepping up its game too. They've been increasing military spending and working closely with the U.S. They've even had discussions with the Pentagon about potential Taiwan-related situations. However, their main focus still remains on North Korea. Considering their priorities, it's unlikely that South Korea would send troops to the Taiwan Strait. Instead, the U.S. might pull some of its 30,000-strong force out of Korea and expect Seoul to provide key support. But this could leave South Korea vulnerable to retaliation from China and put them at a higher risk from North Korea. Now, let's shift our focus to Europe. The UK and France have a naval presence in the Pacific, but they haven't made commitments to defend Taiwan. Instead, they anticipate that the US would be more interested in exploring ways for Europe to hit China economically in a Taiwan crisis. After all, China-EU trade was worth a whopping $732 billion last year. French President Macron is concerned that the US's tough stance on Taiwan could actually increase the risk of a crisis. And he's not alone in worrying about this as other allies share the same concern. Before moving further, we would like you to again subscribe to the channel. From tensions to tranquility, navigating the path to peace in the US-China conflict. Indeed, the current emphasis on military alliances and escalating tensions between the US and China does raise concerns about the allocation of resources and the potential threat to global peace. The world is grappling with various economic challenges and diverting significant investments toward military weapons adds an additional strain. It is important to recognize that China has its own set of alliances and support from countries like Hungary and Russia, further fueling the ongoing conflicts and power struggles. With such complexities at play, it becomes increasingly crucial to prioritize global peace and diplomatic efforts in resolving the Taiwan crisis. In this regard, the United Nations, UN, can play a pivotal role. It is time for the international community to come together under the UN umbrella and initiate meaningful dialogue to address the Taiwan issue. Diplomatic negotiations and peaceful resolutions should be explored as alternatives to mitigate tensions and ensure stability in the region. By fostering dialogue and promoting diplomacy, nations can find common ground and work towards a peaceful resolution that upholds the principles of international law and respects the rights and aspirations of the people of Taiwan.
If you like the video, do subscribe to the channel for more such updates.